<laughs> the best player on Samsung right now. Don't worry. He's still good. He's good overall. SKT versus GE Tigers. Picks and bans. Game number two. You should go to OGN.Azubu.TV. Vote for your favorite super plays of the week. I'm sure there's going to be quite a few from this week. Maybe even from this series. And Urgot banned again. So I think we're going to see a different ban strategy. There we go. Nid Nidalee banned from yeah. SKT. Well, Lee did play that Nidalee uh, quite well in their last map. So. Interesting. GE is actually banning the same champions that we saw SK Telecom ban last time with Callista and the Urgot wanting to give neither of those up for a first pick. Looks like, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Well, GE may be just wanting to kind of test Bang out a little bit now. They tested Marin. He passed. <laughs> They're uh, testing Wolf now. Or uh, Bang, rather. We'll see what happens. Lulu ban. Okay. Huh. I think Lulu, a much more dangerous champion for the GE Tigers than for yeah. SK Telecom. And of course, the LeBlanc you ban. ban. The LeBlanc. You don't ban LeBlanc, you get beat by LeBlanc. Right. That will allow a Hecarim first pick. Get ready for the top smite. It's coming. Yeah, I imagine they will go for that strategy. No Sejuani in the last game. Instead, yep. opting for the Jungle Nautilus. So we'll see if Lee wants to play with the Sejuani this time around. Yeah. So SKT would rather give GE Tigers Sejuani than uh, allow them to play this Rex side, too. Hmm. Lee has been very good on Rex side all season, of course. I wonder what Tom's going to play, though. Maybe just set Nunu again. Although with Tom's the actually top shown like a Hector lot of different champions that he's played already, so this is yeah. encouraging signs. And they're just going to grab the Sivir. Why not? All after right. I, I honestly agree that that's probably Whoa. the best pick, and Hecarim Nunu will be the takeaways. Huh. Uh, I, I really agree that that is the best first pick here, because if we think about how SKT won the last game, they were just very decisive in when they took engagements. Yeah. And Bang really hard carried that game. So why not just go for the Sibber again? If you're banking on GE not grouping up quickly or yeah. efficiently enough, then Sibber's the champion to punish that, and it's working out really well for them this series already. You know, Maokai is still available for SK Telecom now. Tom could easily play that Sejuan if he wanted to. I suppose you don't necessarily need to pick up the Maokai right now, but it might not be a bad idea. Just grab that and not give too much away. Lee, not a notable Nunu player either. Nunu, not the hardest champion to play in yeah. terms of mechanics, but you really have to have that decision-making down pat and know his limits, which is what Tom was able to do to repeatedly steal red buff to mm. be so annoying around that dragon last game. So we'll see if Lee causes the same amount of punishment that we saw from Tom. Now, Jana and, wow, Faker on Cassiopeia, usually yeah. an easy hoon champion. That's Faker playing all the Easy Hoon champions tonight, apparently. He's channeling in his inner Easy Hoon. And are we going to see this Cho'Gath from Kuro? Perhaps. What do you think about the Jinx for Prey? I suppose with the Nunu, it wouldn't be the, the uh, worst choice. Hecarim, Nunu, Cho'Gath, you have a huge front line right there. Yes, you do. So you can get away with some more of these hyper carry style of champions. And especially if you can get people low enough with Feast or to reset Jinx, I think it could be a very strong pick. Wow, they, that's really conservative if he goes to the Ezreal. It's fairly low damage composition, too. All right, Azir again. Okay. okay. All right, Kuro's going to give it another try, and Gorilla going to be taking that Nami this time around. I suppose they do have a lot of AoE CC now. And what's it going to be? Looks like the Sejuani for Tom wouldn't be too surprising. But what are we going to see in the top lane for Marin? Yeah, a Rumble available again, and Rumble a very good selection with this composition. And Maokai, and, and Scion. And Maokai, and Scion, a lot of choices still available. Marin, not really a Scion player, though, so we'll be seeing something a bit newer from him. I think you're not really a Cassiopeia player either, and it's not That's really true. stopping him. It looks like SK Telecom just kind of wanting to throw a lot of different picks at their opponents. And again, you know, a lot of this is mind games too, you know? What can we play? What have we really been practicing? I mean, with Faker, you're like, well, yeah, this guy plays everything, and he's amazing on pretty much everything. But it looks like it's going to be Nar for Mar instead, along with that Sejuani, and we've seen it work very well in the past. Great composition from SKT this time around. They have great peel for Cassiopeia Whoa, and Sivir, okay. and it will be a Kog'Maw pickup for Prey. So also GE 
looking to set up a big Protect the Kog'Maw composition right here. Certainly they have a lot of zoning tools, Tidal Wave, Emperor's Divide, and a couple good AoE ultimates from Smeb and Lee in order to keep people away from Prey. So not a Juggermaw this time without the Lulu, but just a simple Protect the Kog'Maw composition. Yep. Fantastic Siege in this comp right here from GE. Will take a little bit of time to scale though. Hecarim, Azir, and Kog'Maw are all very item dependent, and uh, they are going to need to wait for a little bit. So good 4-1 split push from GE. Great siege from them as well. Meanwhile, SK Telecom, it's all about that 5v5 team fight, and they want to get in quickly on their opponents. They have the peel for the lower ranges on Cassiopeia and Sibur. Now, if Tom lands a good ult, the combo into the Petrifying Gaze from Cassiopeia could be really brutal. Those are long, long stuns. Yeah, and that's going to get bang a lot of time to also take out, Also the Gnar ult, too. too. So, SK Telecom, excellent in terms of team fighting. Great late game as well from the Cassiopeia. She was nerfed a bit in 5.6, so she's not quite as strong late game as she was. See so yeah, how this works for them. And here we go, guys. Game number two. Can GE tie it up? Let's get in the game and find out. Welcome once again to Summoner's Rift. GE Tigers trying to take a tie game against SK Telecom. GE Tigers fans are a bit more into it this time. We'll give it like a solid 8 out of 10. It's okay. SK Telecom fans still totally winning, though. <laughs> the winners of the, the cheering battles. They are. They've gone 2-0 today so far. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually, if they were just going to play... Easy Hoon champions. I am quite surprised they didn't just play Easy Hoon today. The fans want to see Faker, man. Fans want Faker. I guess they do. You're not going to have his parents come to the studio, his relatives come to the studio, and then not play him. Come on. It's a fun story as we keep track of Faker's champions. This is ah. his first professional game on Cassiopeia. We've been hearing that a lot this season. <laughs> yep. Faker can play just amazing. Pretty I mean, much he, anything you want. Consider this guy has been a pro for two years now, and the number of games he's played, and he's still just constantly reinventing himself. Yep. Easy has been so good on Cassie this season, though. Oh, it's Earth. He's made it to the studio. <laughs> oh, there's more there, but we'll never know by, what it is. Held by none other than Ojin Manny, but he's not in his Manny costume today, so we can't show show what he actually <laughs> looks like. To keep it safe. Keep it secret. Okay. Well, it's like we are going to see the Gromp start from GE once again. Are they going to hand it over? No. In fact, Lee is going to get it this time, so no early game shenanigans. Prey should have an advantage in this matchup, though, in the bottom side. This is really difficult for Sivir to deal with with a low range. Hope coming in from Kogma, so great lane. Do you think Lee's maybe going to uh, grab blue and then head over to the enemy jungle and try to be as annoying as Tom was last game? Quite possibly. Would be a reason for the gromp start, I suppose. Well, you'd hit level two regardless, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just not even oh, okay. gonna go for it. Lee, a bit more conservatively this time around. I think every jungler plays a bit more conservatively than Tom does. <laughs> so that's what we're that learning That was really now. fun to watch, though. Tom. Oh, yeah. If you can Tom, do it, Tom. if you can do it, go for it. Tom, Tom was too risky right there, but at some of those points, sometimes it was great, sometimes you're like, mm, I'm not so sure this is a good idea. And he definitely got away with murder by not dying when Kuro messed up his uh, Azir ultimate. Wouldn't that. wouldn't that be the opposite of getting away with murder then? No, he murdered the red buff. Okay. <laughs> he got away with not being murdered. Prey and Gorilla, like you said, are going to have an edge in this lane. They've got that range and they've got that sustain as well with the heal from Nami. So Prey should be able to get a good amount of poke in onto Bang and Wolf. Yeah, Smeb also opting to go Ignite this game instead of the Smite, which someday played so well on that Hecarim yeah. in KT's last match. So a bit of a change, just wants some more kill pressure in the top side. Honestly, I don't really understand that. I think with Nunu, 
GE's much better off going with a smite top laner because the amount of counter jungling you can do and to mess up Tom, who's this newer player who may not be comfortable in that situation, would be pretty, pretty awesome to, to watch, actually. Yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of sense, too. If you're taking everything from the enemy jungle, then that leaves your top jungle for your top laner. Yeah, and also, if you have Nunu, you, you don't have a lot of kill pressure in the top lane, even with that Ignite, so. I thought I we'd see a lot of smite top lane, but I, I think the Korean teams just aren't as practiced with it yet as they want to be, you know? Except for KT, who played it really well. Yeah, but overall, you know, I feel like this is still kind of a thing that's being tested among Korean teams. Yeah, I think out of all the teams that I've seen run that smite top lane, KT has been the most impressive so far with that duo in the mid lane setting their AD carry and support in mid. Yeah, I haven't seen it a whole lot yet, but. And that's also, also something that GE could have done this game. Uh, well, probably not with Azir in a two, uh, one, 1v2, rather. But oh, Gorilla's getting some really good Evan flows off. Getting all, getting both bounces out of it. Now, Gorilla is just generally more comfortable on peel champions, peel supports than engage supports. That is usually what he likes to play. If you've got a good lane partner, you can really do a lot in terms of poking with your W and just keeping your E up 100% of the time on the AD carry. Create some very, very good trades. Wow. It's like Lee actually not going to be going for the Scuttle Crab right now. Oh, there he finally gets it. Goes in, so Faker knows he has to back off in this mid lane right now, lest he find himself snowballed and killed. So. It should be an interesting game. A lot of range battles going on between Azir, or uh, zone battles going on between Azir and Cassiopeia. Fortunately for SKT, when the 4-1 split does take hold, they do have pretty darn good wave clear to deal with it with Sivir and Cassie. So they can actually survive some pretty extended sieges right here, I should think. The one thing maybe Marin as Nar, his wave clear against the Hector and Main. Have some issues later on, but Smep did start Claw 5, so he's going to be a little bit delayed on some of his itemization. Tom's going to be seen by that ward. So, no gank opportunities for SKT there. Mar and his Meganar. Level 6 yet, though, so he Throw can't a building at him. really do much. It's a very small Smep, building. Smep's burned through all his potions already, too, so... Trying to use up that mana pot, maybe heal a little bit off the wave with his W. If only he had a way to go into the jungle and get a little bit of sustain back, you know? <laughs> There's got to be somewhere. Nah, it's just a pipe dream. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Nara gets way too excited about that <laughs> stuff, man. Oh boy, Tom's like, hey, I know this, this counter jungling thing. <laughs> Gonna try to make Lee a little bit miserable. Lee getting away with three out of the four Raptors, including the big one, so a successful invade. That's right, quite successful indeed. Again, Vision yeah. War is right around this dragon as Lee uses the Raptor buff oh. to eliminate that. Tom's back, though. Tom's like, I know these tricks. I've wow, done this. bang. Oh, boy. Oh, bang extremely low. Has to burn that summoner eel. Prey didn't want to out. commit to that, actually, with a flash. May have been able to get the killing blow right there. Yeah, Jan is not going to be able to do that much damage, especially with the Nami there. But the problem is Gorilla had no mana, so. Yeah, it would have been risky. Also, yeah. with what was going on in the river, Lee was getting chased out, so Tom mopping up a kill afterwards could have been a real possibility right there. And flash up for both ADs, too, so not a guaranteed thing. So I guess I agree with that. Yep. Oh, there's a knockup. Wolf getting bloodthirsty, but yeah, I guess that ebb and flow. The problem is, is that it's an expensive spell. Gorilla has no mana for a while now. This bot lane is really balanced on a razor's edge at the moment, although it's a bit better for Bang and Wolf. Yeah, nobody can really gank right now, though. They have good vision in the river, so they don't have to be too concerned with that. Mm -hmm. Faker's just going to get that blue buff. Blue buff handed off to both mid laners right now. Not surprising that we're seeing so little action right here. All of these guys really wanting to scale. Yeah. Yawn. Bami Cinder first for Marin in this situation. So, looks like he will be going for an early Sunfire. That's a good idea, though. Of course, with Smeb, he's going to want to split push, and that's going to give Nar the AoE necessary to push back on a little bit of that wave pressure. Mm -hmm. so I think a good call in this particular instance. Crow's going with the Morellodomicon again. Prey, of course, starting with the Trinity Force. And Faker with the tier, so really 
trying to scale on this one, having a bit of a CS advantage already in that mid lane. We'll watch Bang methodically Probably clear out some minions. Not bad. Got most of it. 2100 gold for him to spend when he makes it back to the base. Yep. Nice for him to get a, get a BF sword, get some boots. Probably. Oh, no, nope, long sword instead. Oh, yeah, more damage. You've got the ult if you need speed. Oh, there we go. Faker has a flash back. Oh, tidal tidal wave, wave coming through. It does hit him. Kuro, can he get there in time? No, not uh, quite. Uh, Kuro just wasted summoner heal. Yeah, Faker really. He got a little bit close again, but he's a slippery snake this time. <laughs> Had to burn both summoners to get away from that one, though. Kuro could have yep. saved his heal. And he was not very well coordinated with Gorilla right there. Even though the tidal wave landed, Kuro didn't commit to following up quickly enough. Faker falling extremely low. The gorilla was just a little bit late. Oh, Lee coming in. There's a snowball on Marin. Marin may have to Good burn flash. that flash. Absolute zero. There we go. Flashes out of the ultimate. But Smeb right there pushes him against the wall. Meanwhile, oh. first blood actually taken by SKT just before the kill comes in for Lee. How did Tom get that I don't know. kill, actually? He must have just shown up and ulted him straight out. I guess so. We'll have to take a look at it again. Yeah, Kuro didn't have any summoners in that engagement, so actually yeah. Kuro gets punished for using that heal. And GE Tigers, they were literally about half a second from getting first blood. <laughs> All right, let's check this one out. Teleport, of course. Not really used, that was odd. Oh, there we go. Oh, Kuro wow. was about one Sand Soldier auto away from killing Faker right yeah. there in a one-on-one, -on -one. and Tom swoops in at the last minute to pick up the kill. Very close indeed. Yeah, nice play for Tom, being there just in time. It was a good bait from Faker, actually. Yeah. After he was low that time, he knew Kuro didn't have summoners, and he didn't have summoners either, and if he caught Tom in a situation where he was overextended, he could create a favorable trade. That's exactly what happened. Have to be careful with Faker. His player really knows his limits like that. Yes, he does. You know, and if he is a champion you've never seen him play before, it doesn't matter. He still knows his limits, even on that champion. Well, Lee lurking by Tribrush. Nice Aqua Prison. And there's a Tidal Wave. They want to go in on this. Bang pops his ultimate, but Lee right there with the Snowball. Can he get in position? He doesn't have his ult up just yet. Oh, oh pray. Nearly gets him with his ult, but the spell shield, I believe, saves Bang there. Uh, really just sidestepping it with the Sivir ultimate. Yeah. Hard to land those abilities, Prey. Well, if Lee had had his ultimate there, that would have certainly been yeah, they could a take kill. A, they could take a Dragon now, though, which is the upshot to all of this. Bang doesn't have enough sustain in that lane to actually make a move on the Dragon. Meantime, sustain on this new new, and Kuro should be able to control the area around the mid lane well enough to take that, even with the Scuttle Crab on the side yep. of SK Telecom. Tom's ult is up, though. Yeah, he and could try to go for it here. No Wolf TPs. is there as well. Here comes Sivir, thinking about coming in. It's pretty scary for GE Tigers. Tom harassing a little bit. Lee on his own in the Dragon Pit. Knockup comes in. They don't quite get him. Dragon still doing damage. There goes Lee. Another kill for Tom. And now over the wall with the ult. Prey in a bit of trouble. Bang all over him. Prey goes down. A double kill for Tom now. And SKT is going to turn onto this Dragon and take it. SK Telecom, you are so good. Wow, GE just not committing right there, and Kuro gave up his position in the mid lane and allowed Faker to sneak in to the river right there. Wow. Instead of controlling the zone, now they get a top lane turret as well, so SK Telecom and GE, they split their attention right there. They kept Lee in the pit, conti continuing to take damage from the dragon while not committing. You know, we've been saying it for a little while now that SKT may be, may be kind of the favorites to win this whole season. And, well, they're uh, certainly more decisive than GE Tigers today, who have had a lot of split calls so far. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that both teams are taking this match pretty seriously. And like you said, they both have a lot of time to prepare and change things up before the finals. So why not go all out? And SKT just looking better right now. I spent a long way away from that Trinity Force as well. We'll take a look at what happened up here in the top side too. I mean, Kuro gets in to the river but has to dodge out. Great play by Faker there to push him out of that situation and also use his ult. Again, SK Telecom creating a situation with a man advantage by Faker using his ult early. Normally you wouldn't use a Cassiopeia ult in a one-man situation. You think, right. hey, I've got to save this to hit multiple people. But right there, he keeps Kuro out of the fight entirely. 
Great play. It's just so very clean, and Faker, man, the twin fang damage is starting to get a little bit insane. Teleport coming down. Oh, there's home guard. They want to catch Faker. Oh, he flashes through wow. it, doesn't get knocked back. He knew exactly what was up there. That's Uses the, the ghost, too, so there's yeah. no chance of retaliation. It's going to be TP advantage for SKT. What a great flash. No kidding. That was like last second right there. Wow, that was a really impressive <laughs> flash. <laughs> it's Faker, man. Pretty amazing stuff. But par for the chorus. You know, again, keep this in mind. Faker's first professional game on Cassiopeia as well. We're seeing stuff like that. We're seeing decisions like that. Amazing. Indeed. And GE just uh, not operating well as a unit today, it would seem. Yep, they seem a bit out of sync. Tom pushing Smab out of the jungle. He's like, nope, this is my jungle now, sorry. You could have taken sn uh, Smite. You could have competed in the jungler. In I the like jungle. how <laughs> Tom has all their kills so far. I know, right? Yeah. Could be a bit better spread, perhaps, but uh, Man, Tom it's is such out. a Tom is such a high-pressure jungler. If you just watch the way he plays. It's so different from Bengi. Tom is like yeah. 180 degrees opposite of Bengi. I mean, Bengi has some good counter jungling on Nunu, and he does he does mess with the enemy jungler on some of these tankier champions. But, but it's the pressure, like you said. Yeah, Tom is. The, the difference is, well, while Bengi wills take some of your camps, and he will get some deep wards in, there's not the same level of threat on lanes that that yeah, Tom is bringing that compared to Bengi. He's always been kind of a point-and-click jungler, right? Whereas Tom is really a playmaker, it seems like, in the jungle. And man, with the amount of playmakers on this SK Telecom team already, what a terrifying addition for the rest of the teams here in Korea. Yeah, it's, it's going be, to be interesting to see how this Tom experiment goes. Yeah. Very curious, too, if SK Telecom wins this season, how much they'll play Tom at a tournament like MSI as well. Yeah, I wonder why. I suppose it'd be really good. It'd be really good experience for him. I think it'd be great to give him a lot of games if they make it to MSI. Now Tom has a pretty big item advantage at the moment. Well, it's not it's not huge, but it's definitely noticeable using the, those kills to pretty good effect right now for those yeah. increased tank stats. The other thing I wonder about Tom because he happened to arrive and just pretty much only play tanks what he looks like on some more uh, skirmishing junglers. Like, I, what, what is his lease in? Like, I have no idea, because this tank meta isn't going to last forever. Yeah, another instance of uh, SKT just kind of falling right into this new meta. I mean, Tom was an Udyr main coming into this, so it <laughs> doesn't really get too much better as far as uh, who you were playing before 5.5 came along. Smab. Not able to get work done in this. Marin has just been playing very pressure-oriented this game. He's wow, been yeah. constantly pushing into the turret, and he did a great job of chipping down the tower in top lane because he didn't have, there was no threat of ganks up there. He just had an opportunity to use the fact that he has a ranged champion all day. Uh -huh. Sounds like, no, my Rift Skeller. Tom's like, snowballs don't hurt me, I'm Sejuani. I throw bigger chunks of frozen water. <laughs> Krug true. Wars. Krug Wars. Oh, Marin wins the Krug Wars. No, Smeb won it. Smeb wins the Krug Wars. That's what I said. <laughs> well, Bang with an interesting build right here. I was afraid he was going to go into Bloodthirster, but instead he's actually just going an incredibly convoluted build. He was worried about the poke coming in from Prey, so just got the Vamp Scepter early for some sustain in lane, but he will be going for that Infinity Edge eventually here. Oh, hello. Tom is <laughs> over the wall. <laughs> <laughs> he's, so, he's so aggressive. I love it. I love watching this guy. He's really fun to watch. I love that his first competitive game ever was a dominating win on Udyr. Like, what? You know this guy is gonna gonna make some waves when that happens. He's just really not afraid to get into your face. No. And for a new player, not really showing any nerves in the booth either. This guy, yeah, he looks like a stone cold killer. 
I mean, we'll see what happens when he ends up in real high pressure situations. Oh, Faker gets a slow onto Lee, doing a lot of damage. There's the ult. Oh, Faker back in the absolute zero. Turns out from some more damage onto Lee. Everybody using so much to try to kill Faker, and he's still going. What is this? Faker barely. Gets taken out, nearly kills Smeb in the process. SKT coming in from behind, there's a nice knockup. Whirlwind as Smeb makes it out. Yeah, they can't keep fighting Whoops. this though because Smeb can go yeah. back to base and he can come back in with the teleport. So, uh, oh, overly ambitious play there from SKT. Uh, I think that they Faker thought there was the people were closer than they actually were because he was pretty easily ulted by Kuro under that turret, and it couldn't have come yeah. at the worst time either for SKT right as this dragon spawns. Well, they may have to give this one up, but this would be like the first Dragon G's got in this series <laughs> yet, true. so it doesn't feel that bad, I'm sure. Yeah, Smeb did a really good job of zoning Faker out of that fight, too. Yep. Questionable ult usage by Faker there on Cassiopeia, also trying to lead with that one to chunk out Lee, and that means that the dragon does go over to GE Tigers. Tom thought about going in for that one. Yeah, Didn't have his ult, though. Tried to catch out Lee right there with the ult, but he ended up just getting the slow. He knew, Faker knew he was just getting the slow as well. Oh, yeah, of course. So if we take a look at this, I mean, but they're both retreating. He gets a slow on to Lee. Kuro then follows up. Faker, this is the third time that's <laughs> happened to Faker tonight. You'd think he'd learn, but no. Yeah. And then the knockback into the tower as well. Yep. Smeb, he does a great job of guiding Smeb legitimately here by hitting all those twin fangs. Look at those mechanics, but Smeb is able to run him down eventually. Smeb without any MR. I think sometimes Faker just forgets that he's not playing LeBlanc. <laughs> he's like, oh crap, I'm Cassiopeia this game. I shouldn't have done this. <laughs> oh well. Then he usually gets the kill anyway, but not that time. Still came really close to taking down Smeb. Yeah, they still have a sizable gold lead as well. So oh, yeah. it's, it's not, not certainly not the end of the game for SK Telecom. Tom also with the fast Aegis here, we can see in terms of items, he's really far ahead of Lee at this stage. More farm has those kills and has the Ninja Tabby and the Aegis already completed. It's actually huge. Now against this team, do you think he's going to go for uh, Banner of Command or the Locket? I don't know. Oh, I would say Locket is more useful here. It's a good amount of AP, especially with the mixed damage coming out of uh, Kogma. Ooh, Smep getting a bit low. Has to run for his life, wow, has Marin. to ult away. Look at that. Marin Snar has been pretty good all season long, and Smep still can't handle it. It's actually impressive that he's doing this well in the Hecarim matchup, especially when Smeb has uh, Ignite. Yeah, it's not normal for this matchup to go this way. Yes, you have the range advantage, but Smeb has had to delay his Trinity Force for the Glacial Shroud, just trying to deal with some of the auto harass that Marin's been putting down. Marin's been playing. Now, Marin's really been great in the second half of the season. He's number one in solo queue right now in Korea. He's certainly upped his game compared to what we've seen before. Yep, Faker's number two. And Ambition number three, actually. Baron call for SK Telecom. I think they're gonna have to back off. Yeah, they will. They can do it fairly quickly, but still. Cassiopeia will be able to destroy that Baron. Yeah. Faker already with a distortion enchantment really wants that summoner uptime on his ghost flash combination. Makes sense. No reason to take cleanse this game, given the comp that GE is running. GE, though, in spite of their disadvantage, you have to be really worried when this Kog'Ma starts to come online here. In a few minutes, Kog'Ma is going to be pretty damn scary to deal with. Yeah. And if GE starts to get down outer turrets, once GE groups with this Kog'Ma, it's going to be really difficult for SK Telecom to stop some of these sieges. Especially since Kuro could just use those sand soldiers to zone you entirely off of towers by himself, almost. Kuro's been getting some items. Already has that death cap finished and has been CSing decently. So he will start to be a bit of a damage threat now. Yeah, much prefer Kuro's itemization this game to the Void Staff. We saw as a second item from him in the last one. Well, he's simply going to be a lot more of a part of team fights at this point with these items. Now it's interesting too that Kuro would be itemizing like this because a lot of what we've seen earlier from Azir's was not this AP heavy build, going for the Stinger, trying to get as many autos as you can off of the Sand Soldiers. And the way, what this means is it is tailored to Kuro's playstyle, who has been going more all in 
on these abilities. You have to be able to use Azir's abilities well, not just his auto attacks with his sand soldiers, if you want to do this item build in particular. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you just go stinger and try and auto them a million times, right? Uh, upping that attack speed. But this case, it's more about using Azir's complete kit to burst somebody. Right. I'm dragging up in about a minute 40 now. And we'll see who's able to take the lead. And that comes up. Meanwhile, SK Telecom is going to take another turret. Up 2-0 now in that category. Really big gold lead, too. Yep. Opened up. 5,000 gold with only three to two kills. It really has been objectives in CS that have helped SK, yeah, SK Telecom, Telecom get a decent lead. They've won all their lanes this game, so they've had a lot of advantages from that in spite of being pretty even in terms of kills. That farm is pretty large, and now they have all that pressure. If I'm GE at this point, Doa, I just give up the next dragon and, and start trying to get some of these turrets down instead, try and even up the gold total. We'll see what they do. At least, you know, this game, they haven't quite shown that top lane desperation, you know? I've been trying to gank that. But it's tough when their turret goes down that fast, I suppose. Well, Lee's getting entirely outjungled by Tom this game. He is behind in CS on a Nunu versus a Sejuani, and he's had, he hasn't had impactful steals, really, coming in. They botched their first dragon attempt this game. With as good as Lee has been all season long, too, to be kind of outjungled by Tom, this kind of newer player, it's pretty shocking. Lee has a jungle well under pressure, though, is the thing. Uh, he doesn't, like last game, we, we haven't seen him make good decisions when there's a lot on the line. He kind of really needs his lanes to win, huh? Uh, and I, I think he uh, he does have some nerve issues just from watching him play. Like we saw those top ganks in the last game. So he has kind of a default mode that he goes to when he has no idea of what he's supposed to be doing on the map. And I don't think it's always very deeply considered. I'm not too worried about getting hit repeatedly while he kills that pink ward. He's so tanky right now. He's got that block at the Iron Solari finish. And so he's not going to be taking a whole lot of damage from GE Tigers. Well, GE really committing to this one. Yeah, they want it. Marin has TP. Here it Here's comes. Here's the teleport coming in. He's going to zone out Kuro a little bit. Meanwhile, Smep turning around on to Tom, waiting for an opportunity here. SK Telecom is going to try for this dragon. Ults up. And Marin about to go Meganar right now. Here they go. Tom coming in with an ult on the lead. He gets the dragon as well. Came in. What a play by Tom. And now GE Tigers in huge trouble. Zone attempt from Lee, but it's just not going to work. Another great ult from Wolf on that Janna. And Faker and Bang just cleaning this up. A flash for the kill from Bang. And Lee, the last one alive in this fight besides Kuro, who had to run away. And he's just trying to recall at this point. Wow, Tom again with a great play, getting that ult in, stealing the dragon. Yeah, and they also were really spread out. So the Sichuani ult wasn't particularly effective. However, Faker's ult was really effective as the follow-up engage that occurred right there. And GE, they weren't equipped to fight that. They were already pretty substantially behind in terms of gold. And really, Prey, he didn't have that Blade of the Ruin King yet. Marin was super tanky, and he simply wasn't able to burn through their front line fast enough without the Blade. Yeah. Uh, and really, GE just needed to hold off on that one. Oh, wait. here we go. Home Garden engage from Smep. They're all over. Nice ult, actually. Kuro in a lot of trouble, though. He's going to go down. SKT turning around. Baron's still very, very low. Smep doing work. A double kill for him. He, he gets, gets the Baron as well. It. Gorilla trying to slow down Faker, and they'll get a triple. A triple kill <laughs> and a Baron for Smeb. Whoops, that was a little bit overeager for SKT, and man, did they pay for it. Yeah. What a response from the GE Tigers. Smeb just going man, well, well, horse mode, I guess, in this case. Now remember, running him over. Smeb didn't use his teleport to get, he just walked down to the dragon. So now all of a sudden, the gold lead comes in 2K, huh. SKT. That's hilarious. Questionable Baron call when they knew that they didn't have tele, or they knew that wow. the teleport was still up. And they may lose two turrets for this as well. Yeah, well, Marin doing his best, but he gets really low, becomes Meganar just before dying, trying to clear that minion away. But no, they can't save that turret. And so a turret, three kills. Make that, uh, yeah, two turrets, oh, okay. three kills, and a Baron. This is really bad, because wow. what they didn't need was Smeb getting a whole lot of money right Seriously. here, because they had done such a good job of keeping him down this game. Gold lead fact, what? Yeah, gold lead nothing now, and Prey also has a chance to get that 
He's finished up that Blade of the Ruined King, and he's close to that last Whisper. That is huge, because GE's power spikes, once they get that last Whisper, uh, Prey will finally be able to destroy the tank line, and that's not going to be great for SKT. Man, what a what a punish on that Baron call. Jeez. GE Tigers, you really... Well, if you're SKT, you think you could do it quickly, right? You know, well, you, you do have, have four people. And you don't think that Kuro and Smab, but look at how Kuro plays this as well. He gets so many people with his abilities right there. Baron dealing damage the entire time, and Smab, he's got that Trinity Force, he's able to get the kill, and then he waits very patiently, gets the Rampage off and the auto onto the Baron, and then takes out Faker as well. Smab, what a hero for that fight. Seriously. Well, you know Smab, one of the best top laners out there. I can't believe I'm saying that, but it's, <laughs> but it's true this season. It's so true. He made the play when it mattered. Sure did. But yeah, you can't, you have to respect the teleport, I think, a little bit more than that. And SK Telecom wasn't expecting Hecarim to come in and be that strong. Kuro also played that just right. Man. Splitting up the team. Because what was so great was the Emperor's Divide did the damage, and it also kept Baron attacking two members of SKT while we saw that Smeb was just killing everybody on the outside of the pit, so it created a great split in the team for Smeb to take advantage of. Nicely played. Well, GE Tigers looking to take another turret here in bot lane. Tom, Wolf, and Marin there. Marin pretty close to that Meganar. The rest of SKT catching up. Tom trying to get in on the Lee there. Frey doing some damage. They're trying to clear out that pink ward as well as they can. SKT really looks like they want to fight this. We'll see. It's really hard to fight now, though, with yeah. his Baron buff. But you can see that wave clear. Even though GE has a great siege composition, they have the ability to zone. The wave clear from SKT, from Sivir, from Cassiopeia, so good that they can't even get in with a Baron buff right now. Oh, Marin just keeping tabs on people. Not Meganar anymore. Guys, give up. Yeah. Well, it's safe, you know? Why risk it? There's a big wave pushing in top, so they might as well go through that, push it back. I think we're going Rylai's, actually. I guess so. so. Well, keeping champions slowed with your abilities is certainly nice when you have people trying to catch up to them, like Bang. It's, it's interesting to me in this series to see how much emphasis SK Telecom is putting on Bang. We had the, the Lulu in the first game. This game, we have a Rylai's on the Faker. Now, Faker's going to be able to peel for himself really well. He's got Ghost and Rylai's right now. Right. So it's also a good reaction to the Hecarim. You know that Smeb wants to get into the back line, wants to get a flank. And if he goes after Faker, he's probably never going to catch up with him as long as that Rylai's is done and the Ghost is up. Now, Bang is also doing a ton of damage right now. Here Faker. we go, though. Really important moment. Praise. Last Whisper is done. Kuro has a QSS, actually, to deal with some of the CC. Hmm. Not a bad call. Especially since he's been going all in every time. Yep. Well, people recalling now on both sides to go back and buy. Dragon up in about 10. Teleport up for both top laners. Actually, Smebs will be up in just a second. He's there anyway, so it doesn't matter. Marin relatively close to that Meganar. So SKT really needs to make something happen here. Prey has to be scared. Yeah. But he has a blood boil this game, so this is the time where Prey starts to get really terrifying. I don't think you poke Prey right now, Marin. No. That's a fast way to get yourself hurt. Well, you have to be really careful, too, not to get poked out too hard by Kuro as well. SK Telecom has a, a good chance of being pushed away, yeah, but right GE's now... He's really split up at the moment. Yeah, they are. However. This is exactly what SKT wants. He's going to turn and try to take this dragon very they can't quickly. can't walk into the chokes, though. Yep, that's right. Nice zoning up. from Faker. They get that dragon. And SKT, just some good positioning in that occasion. Yep, they push GE out of the river. GE was trying to deal with the minion wave in the mid lane. They split him up. And if you're GE, you absolutely cannot walk through those chokes. Uh, and if Sivir ults, well then you have so much crowd control from Cassiopeia, Sejuani, and Nar that you will get destroyed at a choke point. GE, yeah. they, what GE wants to do is set up in a big, big space where they can create a huge front line that's spread out, like all across the river. And that way Prey has some room to work in the back and not everybody's getting hit by the AOE CC. 
This game is so close right now. SKT taking another little lead here. And they are up three dragons to one. That's a big deal since it looks like the danger from Baron is over for now. Also, more move speed for them with that third dragon, too. That's yeah. pretty important for chasing down this Fog Moth and escaping the Hecarim. Look at all the wards from SK Telecom as well, too, just across the map. A lot of pinks in their own side to keep the vision from GE Tigers down, but a lot of good wards in the GE Tigers jungle to keep an eye on him. SKT has great vision right now. Yeah, they do. Also have the crabs on lockdown. Yep. The scuttlers of the rift. Uh -oh. Tom. Tom's a scary guy. Oh, they used the alt teleport. Actually canceled here. Oh, but not Mars canceled nearby. by Snab. No, he came all the way in. They kind of... I don't know, I don't want to say baited one out there, but here comes Smab coming from behind. It looks like they still want to fight this. Tom looking for an opportunity. Marn a little bit on his own. Uh -oh. Meanwhile, a turret goes down uh -oh. in favor of SKT. Trying to save him now. Smab coming in. There's a knockup from Wolf. And Bang needs to be very careful about how close he gets. Dodges that onslaught of Shadows. Lee comes in with the absolute zero, though. Wolf has to flash away. There's the heal. And SKT turning this one around. A big ult from Faker. And SKT will back off. Faker they get the kill on the lead. Faker totally saved that one. saved that fight. But yeah. that's the power of chokes with his composition. Marin and Tom both nearly dying. But if you get in a choke, even though Lee had a fantastic absolute zero right there, there wasn't enough follow-up. Prey simply couldn't get close enough to finish off these kills because there was so much poison in the choke. It made it very dangerous for him to walk in. But you can see Prey really starting to do damage now, and that oh, yeah. is... Quite scary. You know, right before that happened as well, too, Bang was able to get, I believe it was that mid lane turret. So that has evened up the yep. turrets, too, for SK Telecom. Right, really good for SKT. They got a kill right there. A lot of abilities used. Leandri is done now for Faker, so he is going to be doing a lot of work with that poison. Yeah, Faker really been prioritizing a lot of these more tanky items in the current patch happy just to deal damage consistently, which when we think about Faker, we like to think about him deleting people in half a second or a quarter second with LeBlanc and really using Burst Mage as well. But his Nivea, his Cassiopeia, going for Seraphs, going for Rylai's and Leandri's on the Rod of Ages on these champions. What's well, another? That's another point to his credit as one of, as like the best player ever for League. I mean, the, his ability to adapt to such varied yep. champion styles and play styles too. A lot of players get stuck in a rut of one style. And that's because it's just so hard to adapt, but Faker can do it. So SKT keeping an eye on this dragon now as GE takes a bit of vision back. Smeb gets caught in the back. There's the onslaught of shadows onto Faker. He tried to make a play there. Faker in trouble. He goes down. They caught him in his own jungle, and that may lead to a Baron for GE Tigers. We'll see if wow, they decide to take it. Aggressive play again. Yeah, well, it pays off. It does pay off. They're going to try and siege, actually, on a Tier 2. They're not confident enough oh. to go. Sivirol, uh, use, I don't know, just to scare GE away, I suppose. Well, they saved the turret, but now they don't have Sivirol if they want to go for this Baron right here, which I assume they're going to make an attempt on. They don't have. Faker not back for another 25 yet. GE yeah, Tigers going right easy. for that Baron. Tom still has his ult, as does Marin, but Marin not very close to Meganar just yet. Oh, taking a lot of damage, getting closer now. There we go, Kuro pushing people back with his oh ultimate. My. They're going to get him away. Oh, that is a huge engage for GE. Marin with a great ult, though. He saved it, but he's not going to save them from taking this Baron. So at least, at least SKT escapes with their lives. Yeah, but Tom's ult right there in the choke really saved their hides yeah. in a sticky situation. But GE still gets what they came for, which is the Baron buff, before they back out. I'm not sure. I want to know how Faker got caught there. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to replay that one, but I think he was. I just think it was just some good wards from GE. Yeah, look how much damage Frey is doing right now. They absolutely can't do anything. Kuro catches Tom against the wall. Tidal wave comes up, and Tom pulls the trigger right here. Great ultimate to save his entire team. <laughs> if not, two or three more people die right there for sure. Yeah. With no Sivir ult available to run away. Man, Tom's really been a hero in this game. Oops. A faker. <laughs> Oops. Gorilla just out of rage right there. Tried to create a pick. He's close. Still getting to do some damage. 
little bit anyway. Dragon up in 10. And so, SKT, you know, they didn't get the Baron, but they can still try for this fourth Dragon, maybe. Yeah, they don't have Cassie ult now, though. So it'll make it a bit tougher. Faker went for the high risk, high reward play right there. That's that's more of the Faker we, <laughs> we know and love. There we go. Maybe not changing his play style too much. Yeah, the ult's on a pretty low cooldown though overall. And the dragon started by the GE Tigers. Marin right there. Tom coming from the side. Lee trying to zone him there. Marin needs to be careful he doesn't take a lot more damage. Uh, SKT's taking a huge amount of poke right yeah, now. Yeah, they are. Okay, Kuro doing a really good job of zoning with those Sand Soldiers. Marin about to go Mega Nar at the moment. Looks like they're going to get this dragon up. GG Tigers takes it. That's their second of the game now. Hogma is terrifying. <laughs> yes, he is. Hogma is quite a handful right now. Ooh, Tom. Hi. Questionable location to recall in, but does make it out. But now GE starting to power through these turrets. Coming to a gold lead for the first time in this game. Yeah, just barely. 300 gold ahead. SKT feeling the pressure once again. It's been it's been back and forth this game for sure. Marin, wow, that poke though. Yep. Man. GE is, they've become fully operational at this point. This uh, is, I think so, man. They really got back into the game based off of that Baron call from SKT, which, you know what, it wasn't the best Baron call from SKT, but also give some credit to Smeb and Kuro right there for getting a triple kill onto Smeb. <laughs> that was, I'm sure even in, SKT didn't even see that probably as a worst case scenario going into that. You don't think no. that the Hecarim is going to triple kill you and steal the Baron. Yeah, I mean, again, SK Telecom knew they could take that Baron very, very quickly, so it wasn't really like the worst call ever. GE just did a good job of punishing. Yeah, Kuro and Smeb played the fight quite well. Yeah. Yeah, and this is one of those games, too, where both teams are playing so well that it's going to be the, the little mistakes like that, the smallest things that kind of decide the winner. Well, I'm just surprised at how hard SKT got punished for that, really. Yeah. More than anything, that's the shocking part, is that GE was able to turn that little mistake into such a huge, huge advantage. Well, that was an Azubu super play from Smep for sure right <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah, three kills and a Baron. All right, well, Prey has a QSS now, so this game probably pretty much over at this point. There's no way to kill Blood Boiled Kogma any longer. We've seen this many times before from the GE Tigers. GE, if they have another five on four situation that SKT can punish, maybe they can take this, but man, this Kogma is huge. Yeah, with two QSSs, you know, Kuro has one as well. Baker's ult just not going to be doing much, but when are you going to get in position to ult a Kog'Ma with Cassiopeia? That's no, the... it's mostly about Tom's ult. They want to make sure they can yep. not get tied up with that. Yeah, Martin pretty tanky himself, but... Oh, yeah. yeah late game Hecarim is nothing to be... I had meant Marin. Narn. Oh, Marin, sorry. But not, definitely not the same amount of damage that Smeb's bringing to the table either. No. And Faker still has no armor. He has the HP, has a little bit of MR and that Abyssal Scepter, but not anything that helps Smeb from just 1v1ing him at the moment. He might be going for an arm guard here. Let's see. Do you think he should have gone for that a little bit sooner? Oh, you know, well, so no, because you didn't think that Smeb was going to be a huge threat in this game well, because of how true. well Marin was holding him down. Yeah, he, if he wouldn't have gotten that triple kill, he'd still be pretty far behind. It's true. Gorilla with the QSS as well. Classic Gorilla QSS on his supports. Yep. Hey, he's really made it work. Oh, it's great. I think it's yeah, perfectly fine to have. See, then you just build into Mercurial Scimitar, then you get Nash's Tooth. You because damage Nami. The thing, the thing about having the QSS on the support, and we always, or not always, but most of the time see Gorilla go QSS first on Janna when they play Juggermaw, is that with Nami and Janna, you can just QSS the first one, use your ult, and then that forces them, that basically eliminates two engages that they have. Because if you think about it, so Tom throws his ult in, okay, maybe it hits three people, Gorilla QSSs and then tidal waves. Yeah. Well, they can't follow up on the, the Szechuani ult then, so they have to use another CC ability to close the gap. And that means that you just increase the chance that your opponent will create an error while it's pretty easy just to hit QSS and Tidal Wave or Monsoon. 
Yep. And you've got Crucible 2 for your AD carry, and your AD carry's got QSS, so. Yeah. GE in a really good position now. Certainly looks that way. Minute 30 until Dragon, but only a little less than a minute for this Baron. So SKT. Seems like they just kind of need to make picks at this point. If well, they, they can. They have to catch them out of position, and they, yeah. they can do that. They have enough speed with the Ghost on Faker and the Sivir ultimate. Uh, they can they can make a play, and GE has made a lot of errors tonight in terms of grouping efficiently or, or not respecting SK Telecom's ability to engage, particularly in that first game. Uh, this time they're playing much more conservatively, and look at that wave clear coming in at this point. <laughs> uh, Blood Boil Kogma is a pretty scary thing. Got Infinity Edge now too. Oh man, this is Azir isn't too bad at this either. is going really wrong for SKT now. We might end up seeing game three. Smeb comes in. Ooh, tries to push Marn against the wall. Doesn't end up working. This is classic GE Tigers, though. Fall behind in the early game, punish one mistake that the other team makes super, super hard, and then come back through good team fighting in the mid game. Kind of sounds like a SK Telecom a K from a while back, actually. <laughs> so it gets pretty familiar. Marin. Marin needs to be careful here. He's almost Mega Nar. And that's not the best timing for Meganar. Ten seconds before Dragon. Ooh, I don't know. SKT in big trouble now. Maybe they can engage. Bray still has movement speed bonuses from this Nami, at the very least. Mm -hmm. More Azir turrets dying somewhere. Well, looks like they're going to go. Well, Faker's doing Dragon, so they're trading Dragon for Baron, at least. And that's going to be fourth Dragon. So, even though this yeah, Baron might can take it, Tom, thinking about coming in. Oh, he doesn't get it. It was so close. Lee managed to smite it away, though. Now SKT on the run. Oh, Bang got caught. Absolute zero from Lee. They're chunking down Smeb. And here comes the rest of SKT. They're turning it around. Are you serious? Faker getting a pretty good position. Oh, flash help on Nanami. You're going to keep chasing. Is here in a bit of trouble? Good ult from Wolf to keep people healed up. Prey caught, goes down, bang with the kill, and Lee taking out a double kill for Faker, and Zonia's only prolongs the inevitable for Kuro, and that is an ace, only losing Faker. Baron buff, what? It's gone now, and they got the fourth dragon. SKT, talk about finding opportunities. Wow, I'm wow. really surprised they were able to take that team fight especially starting it with that 5v4, but they found a way to get in. And Kuro tried to... It. It's over. He tried to bounce Tom out of the pit with his ultimate. I think he probably could have saved that one, actually. No kidding. What a great series. SK Telecom versus yeah, G-Tigers. But in the end, again, small mistakes punished hard by both of these teams. It was close, but the death timers say that SK Telecom are going to be able to take this game as they take down the second Nexus turret. And as close as that game was, in the end, SKT with a 2-0 and a perfect second half of the season. Incredible stuff going into the finals. That's right. Quarterfinals, rather. <laughs> Not even quarterfinals. Gauntlet. Whatever it is, I don't care. It was a great match. Playoffs. Yeah, very yeah. impressive by SKT that they could complete their perfect second round robin right here. And I really you feel. Know, I'm taking a look at that team fight again. Man. Uh, it's on our monitor right now, but Kuro using the Emperor's Divide so early, I feel, was a pretty big mistake. Uh, hey, because MC. they couldn't actually prevent uh, the SK Telecom from getting on to their back line after that moment. Man, SKT, what a team. And, you know, I really do feel like we just got our preview of the uh, season finals, and that's a lot for GE Tigers to think about going into it, but. You know, SK Telecom.